Hi, you guys. How's it going? That was gorgeous, wasn't it? I'm Christy Lemire from RogerEbert.com and KPCC Film Week and the Breakfast All Day podcast, but you are not here to see me. You want to see Matthias Gonertz. Come on out. I work so hard to get your name right. I've heard it pronounced so many ways, and they're all wrong. So do it again. Schoonerts. That's it. <laughs> I'm so close. Thank you so much. I'm so happy much. to see you. Me too. I'm happy to be here. Yes. So, um, so what did you know about horses prior to this film? Well, I knew a lot about horses, but I didn't know a lot about this program. This, this program was kind of a surprise to me. Um, so when, when Laura contacted me, I was, I was like, wow, this, is, this, is, this has movie written all over it and, and, and urgence written all over it and relevance. So... Uh, yeah, I was so, so um, glad when she, you know, proposed me to, to play that part. I was like, okay, this is a story that needs to be told, so let's, uh, let's do everything we can to, to put it out there. This is her first feature. Absolutely. Which is amazing. Yeah, she's been working on it for, I think, approximately six years to get it made, so it was a passion project. What were those early conversations like between you and Laura about the character? Well, in... in you know, as preparation for the movie, we, we, I was attached to the project two years before we started shooting, and that enabled us to spend a lot of time together and also to come out to the U.S. and visit uh, three maximum, uh, maximum security facilities and spend a few days with inmates and, and you, know, get, you know, get to talk to them and get insight in, in certain aspects of their psyche and, and what the experience is like to spend so much time incarcerated. What surprised you that you learned from them? I think the most important thing that I've learned is that, I mean, people need kindness, I think. Uh, and of course, it, it's, it's a, yeah, but it's really true. It's really true. Um, you know, it's a, it's a complex world that we live in. Uh, we all noticed also today what happened in New Zealand. And it all comes from confusion and pain. And, and I think if we learn to be, you know, nicer and kinder to each other, we would be surprised how many miracles we can make happen with just a little bit of kindness. <laughs> Your character is so powerfully, quietly stoic and withdrawn in the beginning. How did you come to understand him and how he got to that place? Well, it's, it's when I can imagine, and those are also the testimonies that I've heard from inmates, if you spend, you know, a year in isolation, two years, five years, ten years even, I mean, you kind of lock in. It's, 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 um, and you kind of alienate from everything, from the outside world, but also from yourself. So, and, yeah, then you become silent. You know, you don't vocalize what you think, you don't talk about what you think, you don't express yourself in, in any way. So, so, yeah, silence becomes the biggest part of your being. And you've played roles before that are extremely physical, whether it's in Bullhead or Rust and Bone, this, this is a different kind of physicality. How did you, and you bulked up even more than you already are, so how did, how did you get to that physical place to play this character? How do, it, it, just put in the work, actually. It's just, just uh, don't, don't overthink it too much and just give it, give it as much as energy and uh, as much as, just as much passion as you can, basically. And I was so in, in love with the part and I, was, I, was, I, I wanted to do everything to make this this character as, as tangible and as authentic as possible. Let's talk about the horses. There are various horses that you worked with along the way. Can you describe what the various horses were like and what state they were in? No, also when, when we prepped the movie, of course, I, I you know had to learn from scratch. I, I couldn't ride, I didn't know, I, you know, I knew a few things about horses, but I didn't know how to work with a horse. So we visited a couple of ranches and then one day, I saw this horse, this buckskin horse, and I had, I had this crush on it. And I said, that's the one. I said, that's the one. I want that in the movie. That's my horse. That's got to be that's gotta be the one. But as you saw in the movie, there's several stages. Um, so the, the horse has to be broken in the beginning because it's wild. So we, we needed to have three different horses, one that was completely uh, wild, savage, so to speak, and then one that was semi-trained, and then one that was completely trained, so, so we could use them for all the stages that we need them for in the movie. Was that daunting to be alone? I mean, certainly there are folks around who know what they're doing. There are trainers and people, and you're not going to get trampled in real life, but yeah, was but it daunting to be in the presence of that kind of power? 
it's extremely impressive. It's like imagine being in the ring with ten Mike Tysons. It's you know, but it's that kind of it's the equivalent of that type of strength and unpredictability. And uh, but it's also insanely impressive and inspiring and poetic. This, this animal, the, the the elegance of such an animal, but combined with the extreme strength um, of this animal, it's, it it makes it a very paradoxical, fascinating um, you know, creature. So what did you come to love about horseback riding? Uh, just everything, actually. Um, the, the sensation, the how how an, how a horse feels your energy and, and feeds off of your energy. So the more tense you you are, or the more nervous you are, the the more you know, the more the horse is going to be nervous. And and so the, the the synchronicity that you need to you know uh, work on and, and discover and develop with the horse uh, and the harmony that comes from it. Uh, once you get to the point where you feel like you synchronize, you become one with the horse. That's a beautiful experience. Let's talk about your scenes with Gideon Adlon as your daughter. She's tremendous. Yes, absolutely. And she just, we had four scenes and we shot them in, in the course of two days. So yeah. it's, it's pretty tough, you know, because we're shooting for five weeks, six weeks. And she just comes in and she has no, you know, she has to discover the set. She doesn't know what the, what the tone, what the, what, the, what the energy is of the, of the team. And she just has to come in and then hit it right away. And that's, that's pretty impressive what she did. I was going to ask you, what kind of discussions did you guys have before those scenes? But it sounds like not a whole lot. No, we did. <laughs> we did. But at the same time, you know, you can, you can talk so much that you end up, you know, um, sucking the life out of it before you even start. Mm -hmm. So she was ready. And, and also, you know, we're, it's not like we've, in the story, we haven't met for so long. So we wanted to keep that level of, of you know, awkwardness and, you know, discovery. And, and we, yeah, we were trying to protect that as well. And your scenes with Jason Mitchell are fun. Yes, absolutely. The, we, we became lifelong friends already. How so? <laughs> what What are some fun things you guys did? No, it's just it's just an energy thing. You know, you sometimes you meet people and immediately you connect, and there's this kind of exchange of of energy and and uh, pleasure and passion and and similar you know common grounds and all that type of stuff. And yeah, so we're friends. <laughs> it's it's consolidated. It's yeah. Will you get a horse now? Are you a horseman now? Well, basically, Lore and, and Molly, who, uh, who co-produced the, uh, the movie, we, they bought the horse, the original horse. And it's on a ranch now, and I'm going to visit it after tomorrow. The one that you fell in love with? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So you guys are buddies for life now. That's yes. good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What do you hope people take away from this film? Oh, oh man, there's so many things, I think. But the most important thing is, is to believe in the possibility of change and that nothing is ever irreversible. Um, um, I hope it also stimulates people to, you know, believe in, in the prison reform uh, program that all types of people are, and, and all kinds of people are trying to, you know, reinforce right now. People like Jay-Z, but also Jane Fonda has been on this, on this, um, on this mission for more than 30 to 40 years. And I think it's really important that we, you know, that we take care of the people that, you know, uh, are not as lucky as we are, and that hit rock bottom, and, and, and to still care about them. And some of the folks in the film with you are gentlemen who have been through that program as well, correct? Yes, absolutely. A lot of the extras were people that were former inmates and that were part of this program. And what did you learn from them? Well, they gave us a, they, they, they were like the actual real life proof of, of the beautiful impact of this program. And they've, they've proven that this program really changed their life. This program is also one of the most successful rehabilitation programs. Uh, the percentage of recidivism is almost none. So, so yeah, there you go. I had not heard of it before, but clearly it's beautiful and it works, and so I'm glad this film exists to educate the world. Who has questions? Who has questions for Matias? Anybody? No one has a question for this man. He's sitting <laughs> right here in front of you. You're going to be silent. Thank you so much. Right here, please. No, I don't. I, I, I'm a, I'm a city kid. So, but, but actually, nowadays everything is possible. You can, you can, you know, run through the city with a horse. Apparently, because there's also um, a couple of uh, guys that were involved in this project, and they're called the Counting Cowboys, and they, uh, you know, they, they, um, they rescue horses, they, they re-educate them, they train them, and they, uh, and they cruise around Compton. It's, 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 it's a crazy sight. If, if, if. 
if any of you um, are on Instagram, uh, well, their page is called Accounting Cowboys, and then you can see, you know, it's it's a very bizarre sight. Like the entire, you know, posse on the horse going to the 7-Eleven, <laughs> cruising down Compton. I'm like, yeah, all right, fantastic. <laughs> no. Who else? In the, in the hat right there, the baseball cap right there. Well, actually, actually, there was nah, no incidents. I know. I mean, maybe I should make one up just <laughs> to have a good story for you guys. But uh, no, nothing, nothing crazy happened. And I think that also, you know, um, speaks on behalf of of the trainer that that helped us out, who was an amazing, uh, am amazing horse trainer, uh, Rex Peterson, who's also the man behind Hidalgo and and Black Stallion. Uh, somebody who understands horses like I've never seen before. And, and he just made sure that, you know, it, for him it was an honor thing to not have any incidents on set. So he was very, uh, you know, he's very protective of that and, and, and make sure that, you know, we were really safe. Right here. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean... Every, every uh, program, apparently, um, and I don't want to pretend to be an expert because there's, there's so many different programs and there's so many different facilities with so many different philosophies um, in, in so many different states, there's so many different laws. So it's a very complex, um, complex story. Uh, but there's many, many programs that are also successful, but they all, they all get evaluated, and apparently the horse program was one of the most successful. As I said before, the percentage of recidivism is... Almost, you know, almost none. Let's do one more in the back. Is there a woman in the back? In the hat, yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, but it, that's also part of, of a certain uh, step in the process is that in the beginning, of course, you know, to establish some kind of contact with the horse in order to be able to work with the horse, you got to, you know, you got to get close to the horse. So as you see in the beginning of the movie, everything is about the horse allowing you to touch it. So that already takes weeks. And, you know, Roman being as, you know, um, um, impulsive as he is, wants to impose his will on the horse. And as we see in the movie, that doesn't work. So as soon as he, like, kind of gives up and actually surrenders to the fact, like, okay, this is not going to work, all of a sudden, the horse comes to him. And that's, I think, uh, a beautiful existential uh, lesson. <laughs> Thank you. It's a gorgeous film. It's a great performance. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being here. Thank, Thank you, you so guys.